And very welcome to my YouTube channel. Do you have anything here? I'm going to talk about traveling during pandemia times. Is it worth to move to Bali in case you want to run away from this horrible winter in Europe and move somewhere nice and warm? So the first question will be: Is it really safe to travel during a COVID? It's a good question, actually. You're probably safer to travel than not to travel because traveling is so good for your mental health. Gives you some great perspective, and that ultimately has a knock-on effect to your physical health, immune system. And so I'd say you're probably safer traveling than, than you are not traveling. <laughs> Changing up your environment, that you really start to grow as a person, and it really feeds your mind. And when you feed your mind, you're feeding your body, you're feeding your soul, and that just has a knock-on effect, right? And build up an immune system as well. I mean, I haven't felt insecure in terms of my safety. I haven't personally come across anyone on my travels. And I've been traveling through this whole COVID situation that's been affected by COVID. And one of my main considerations when I was in lockdown in Laos was, do I go back? Because I was uncertain of whether this was a real threat or not, and I was questioning kind of the healthcare yeah. system, right?、Mm. But then it kind of came down to, where am I the most happiest? Because ultimately, your mental health feeds everything else, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So do what makes you happy, and if that if that means traveling, travel. Top reasons why travelers need to visit Bali. Everything is pretty much ten times cheaper than it is in your traditional westernized country. It means you're ten times richer. Better quality for the same quantity. Exa exactly. Imagine jumping on a plane, landing in a country, and instantaneously the money in your bank account is worth ten times more because you can do ten times as much, right? And and it's true what you said. Like not only are you richer, but the quality of everything is actually. So much better in terms of your accommodation, what you get for the money, in terms of the quality of food, right? So you obviously got the whole kind of financial aspect because kind of money does run the world as much as we hate to say it does. I would say、um, the culture, the people, they seem a lot more spiritually in tune. They they're projecting a lot of good vibes, which is really kind of、uh, refreshing and empowering. You know, there's so much to do that doesn't require money. You can literally make friends so easily. Go on a beach and just talk with people. No money, still lots of honey, which is、uh, yeah, it's key. Because of the energy and the vibe, you really do fall into like this flow state of mind, and you you tend to kind of be more connected with the universe.、You、feel like you're surrounded by more of an abundance of opportunity. Everyone's kind of open-minded, vulnerable, and kind of just being the most authentic version of themselves without any labels and being influenced as much by the matrix by society as such. And that's kind of refreshing, right? So the next question would be, what is life in Bali looks like, and is it easy to find a jobs for foreigners? If you speak English, very easy. In that part of the world, English is very much a high in demand language, and if you speak English, people want you. Whether it's working in a hostel, whether it's working at a bar, whether it's working on the beach, whatever it may be. From from what I've experienced and what I've witnessed. You know that they they want to take you on ASAP,、um, and it seems pretty straightforward, right?、Mm. All you got to do is ask. Just teach English abroad. There's so many different places you can go, so life looks a little different everywhere you go. <laughs> um, tropical vibes. Whether you're in hipster kind of bar or on the beach having a J, dare I say, chilling on a hammock, like bounty style all the day. I think every day I'd watch the sunsets. Hikes are incredible. Beach is phenomenal. I mean, all the beaches are very, very different. You know, you could be in Changu. Changu is very renowned for its kind of beach clubs and beach bars. Surfing. You've got Abud, where you could be、um, surrounded by the the rice fields, and you've got like these monkey forests. Or you could be on the Gili Islands, right? These isolated islands where there's no cars, no scooters, just bicycles. You know, people only either cycle, walk. Or get a horse and carriage. I never got the horse and carriage because I, I don't. I don't. I don't condone that kind of stuff. <laughs> horsey, horsey. <laughs> prices for alcohol, prices for a fruit and a food. You know, I love street food, right? I think in Asia, Indonesia, those kind of places, street food is kind of king. Restaurants are great too, but to give you an idea on price, like you could get like almost double the size of that, right? You could get a fresh fruit juice. I love watermelon juice. Freshly squeezed watermelon juice. No artificial. Sweeteners, just juice, just juice, straight from the watermelon, right? No bullshit, right? You'd be paying like 50p. So it's safe to eat a street food. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, I had no problems. I think there's a general respect around food over there. You've got a lot of places where they have like these buffets. Like you don't serve it yourself. You know, you just pick and choose what you want. But yeah, in a restaurant, you could you could get a nice plate of food, or on the street, anywhere from like 
50p to like two pound. Alcohol, very cheap. I like to have whiskey and coke. I think that normally costs me like a pound. Local alcohol? Bintangs. Ah! You just reminded me of Bintangs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like the lemon one. I'm a bit of a bit of a wuss in that respect. Bintangs are like, I think they work out about 80p. You've got lemon bintang, you've got the original is bintang. Is it strong or is this like a wine or what, what is it? What kind no, of I think it's a straightforward lager. Do you know what? Do your research and drop it in the comments, that'd be great. I think no matter what your financial situation is, you can make it work and live really, really comfortable. And honestly, look at your bank account at the end of every month and think, is that all I've spent? Uh, question number four, uh, differences in between of Bali and London. <laughs> Where do I start? Um, <laughs> Dude, I've got to say, I mean, they're complete opposites um, in, in every sense of the word, I would have to say. London is the matrix. Bali is what I would call nature, life. Energy would be number one. People are very focused on artificial gain. Whereas I feel in Bali, they're more present and in the moment. In London, you know, you're overthinking the future and you kind of miss out on the moment. The main priority or focus for most of obtaining this, this financial gain for a time that may never come. The weather, you don't even get to see the sky in London. You're just covered by pollution, right? And these black clouds, uh, most of the time. See too many clouds in, in Bali, and when you do, you know a beautiful lightning show is, is about to, to, to present itself. I love quotes, do you like quotes? I do. Yeah, motivational stuff, right? Yeah. Dude, you'll literally see like these motivational quotes that are there to empower you and brighten up your day, just everywhere. You don't see that in London, do you? Yeah. You've lived in London, right? I, I did. I mean, there's, there's some good things about London, there's okay? Some, yeah. All right. London's very multicultural, very diverse. I think there's a bit too much noise. Um, I think there's just too much going on. So there is less of an interaction, less of a natural, authentic flow in London. There's more egos. There's a lot of noise. So people kind of do miss the small things and just get lost in your own little bubble. From my experience living in London, that is a bit more of a challenge, for sure, versus Bali. So is there any scams in Bali that you have to be aware of? Yes. So first and foremost, when you ask for the price of something, don't be surprised if it's four times the price of what they would charge a local. Get familiar with prices. You ask people that have lived in Bali for a little while, mm -hmm. so you're not getting ripped off. And you set the tone. You don't ask the price, you tell them the price. Um, in terms of like drugs and stuff, right? You know, I'm not saying I condone drugs, but by all means, you know, there's going to be people that watch this video that are likely to experiment and whatever it may be. Just be very careful. There, there, there is a typical scam where they'll offer you drugs. Number one, it goes without saying that you may pay for something and it's not what they say it is. That's, that's number one. Number two, and the key one is that they'll sell you the drugs and then literally there'll be a police officer almost watching or they're going to call a police officer and they'll come snap you up, arrest you, basically bribe you, they'll want money off of you, and then they'll let you go. So be very careful. Okay, one more that I must emphasize. When you're driving a moped, if you're not wearing a helmet, expect to be pulled over and you will get fined. Oh. <laughs> hey, baby. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> but you can negotiate, because I negotiated and I got 50% off. I didn't even have 20 rupees. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> What's the most curious thing in starting long way traveling? It's a simple one, Nadia. Just booking the flight. It's literally booking and committing to your decision to just go. If that's what you know you're feeling to do, just do it. And the moment you get on the flight, things will just work itself out. Trust the process and it will all work itself out. Hey. Uh, suggestions for people who consider themselves moving to Bali and what shall they know? check out the visa requirements, the visa situation. I mean, it's pretty easy to get your visa sorted, but just check that out. Um, from my understanding from when I went, when you get to Indonesia, you're immediately granted with a one month visa. You can pay a small fee, you can get extended for a further month. Unfortunately for me, I didn't pay that because I'm very last minute and I thought, ah, I'll sort out later. If you don't pay for it there and then, you can't extend after a month. Oh, by the way, it's very expensive if you overstay your visa there, especially compared to like Thailand and other, you know, other Asian, Indonesian places. Uh, make sure you check out the visa situation because you don't want to be in a situation where you want to stay there longer and you can't or you overstay and you get fined or whatever it may be. So check out the visa. Definitely book somewhere for a couple of nights. You don't need to overly commit. But what that means is, you know, you've got a base the moment you get there. So you don't have to worry. Also utilize the knowledge of people at the hostel. In terms of accommodation, I was paying on average anywhere between like two to five pound per night for a hostel. In terms of having your own room or maybe your own flat, you can literally get away with 
paying anywhere from like 200 euros to 600 euros per month. I know people that are probably spending like 100, 150 a month. You know, there, there's many places you can literally just turn up and agree a deal on the spot. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much guys, guys for watching this video. If you like it, please put thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm going to see you next week. Mwah.